Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Aquaman Annual Number Two. All right, this was a really good issue, and I think that there's a really good reason for it. I'm going to hopefully explain that by the end of this. A little bit of extra credit top down to the five things that I'm going to already tell you about this comic book after we talk about who made it. So we have got Dark Clouds, Kelly Sue DeConnick and Vita Ayala are the writers. Victor Ibanez on art, J. David Ramos on colors, Clayton Cowles on letters. Victor Ibanez does the cover, and yeah, that's it. Oh, Aquaman is created by Paul Norris, and there's a bunch of, like, you know, editors in here, and good job, everybody. This was an amazing comic book, guys. Number one that I want to talk about is Mother Effin' Sea Daddy. Really? Really? We've got a new villain in this book called Sea Daddy. Yeah, basically, at some point, he's got to say, hell yeah, because this is the kite man of the Aquaman universe. And I love it. Don't you dare get me wrong for a second. You know what? Go read the comic book to find out more about this, because, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's get talking about number two on this list. Uh, Adebe is my hero. Okay, I, like, all these gods are, you know, like, we're, we're discovering their personalities. We're learning more about these individual older gods' characters. And I'm in love. Like, you you find out a whole lot about two of them specifically. But the part with Adebe, boy, you try my patience. Yo, Adebe almost went freaking tall man uh, on, uh, like, from Phantasm on that store clerk, man. That, oh my god, I love this character so much. I, I, I want her to be my grandma. I want her to be my grandma. Wow. Anyway, let's get talking about number three on this list. Damn, the detail in this art. Look, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say, oh, well, I don't like Victor Ibanez because of this, that, or whatever. That's cool, man. That's cool. But there's some scenes that happen in this comic book, and I'm wondering if I could just pick up on one of them. Well, that's a commercial. Well, that's another commercial. There's a lot of commercials here. Anyway, look at the fire tidal wave in the background. Hey, did you notice that there was a party in the front? Yeah, dude, there's a lot going on in so many of these images. And how they're able to just pull it all off is beyond me. There are parts that, uh, there's smoke over here. Let me go back to that. The, okay, that's uh, Sven Gulli. You know what? I'm not going to, I think my fingers are just too dry to keep on doing that. But like, this is a gorgeous comic book, man. Every so often you'll see like a splash in the water. Little things that happen in the background. Oh, there's one right there. Little things that happen in the background that don't need to. And, you know, I think about the comic book writers of the past who are like, you, you don't need to write backgrounds in a character. You don't need to draw a background to a character, uh, into a panel. It's not necessary. And then Victor Ibanez comes along and says, wrong. This is awesome. He don't get paid any extra to do that. He does this to make us understand and appreciate what he's capable of doing. Victor Ibanez, real talk right here? You deserve it, brother. You deserve it. Let's get talking about number four on this list, and that is Aquaman's Trident is heavier than it looks. <laughs> okay, is this like a the TARDIS is bigger on the inside comment? Anyway, um, I love that. I don't remember ever seeing this addressed before. It's like, oh, Aquaman just leaves his trident here. Anybody can come along and take it. Yeah, try and lift it. In the past, Aquaman was never really portrayed as being super strong. Like maybe he can lift a ton or maybe 10 tons. Depends on who, who's writing him, right? But as of not too long ago, he's probably, I don't know if they're going to, suggest that he's as strong as like let's say a uh, Prince Namor character but every so often they they you know every crisis or so they've been doing this one image where Aquaman will punch Superman and almost knock him out I have zero complaints about that zero complaints about that I like the idea that Aquaman is stronger than the rest of us and not just by a little bit you know I don't want him just to just be the strongest human that there is no I want him to be like the, uh, you know, a very, very strong, physically strong character. Uh, so the idea that um, he leaves the trident there and nobody takes it because most people can't lift it, yeah, I'm good with that. 100% good with that. I don't need to be a returning trident or use the force to bring it back to him or something. No, just the idea that it's heavy. You guys remember um, when Daredevil first started fighting against the Kingpin in Daredevil's old book, uh, his own book? Kingpin had a safe that didn't have any locks on it. He just expected, nobody's going to come down here who's as strong as me. I have the strength to just lift it, like, you know, effortlessly. Somebody like Daredevil, he almost broke his back opening this safe. No locking mechanism on it at all. That was awesome. That was great. 
And that's, that's a good copy of what I'm seeing here. I dig on that a lot. Finally, let's talk about number five on this list. Um, they tried to Donny Cates the dog, man. Salty first appeared in the New 52 era of Aquaman. That's one of the few that I didn't read when it came out. I was overseas when, when that uh, happened. I was in Saudi Arabia at the time. but um, Or somewhere in the Middle East. I think it was Saudi Arabia at the time. Anyway, um, I did, however, come back home and I, I wanted to read the Aquamans. Uh, I actually read the Aquamans before I read the uh, the Night of the Owls, all that stuff, you know, with the Talon and the Court of, Court of Owls, not Night of the Owls. Um, yeah, because Aquaman, dude, loves me some Aquaman. This, seeing Salty make a reappearance and they're teaching him how to swim and whatnot. Great job. So much detail in this comic book. A lot of humor and everything. So now here's the extra credit. What was I talking about? Why I think this comic book is good. DC, well, actually, the comic book industry right now has a secret weapon that sometimes appears in Marvel, sometimes appears in DC. It was just in Captain Marvel issue number 11 last week, I think it was, or the week, I think it was last week. And um, I made a mistake in commenting on this individual, Vita Ayala. Vita has written the Prisoner X from Age of X-Men, which was one of the only two out of six stories that were going on with the X-Men at the time for the Age of uh, Age of X-Men. And it was actually really, really good. And yet, <laughs> um, I think everything that Vita touches is freaking gold. Everything. I haven't read anything that Vita's done that I didn't love. Uh, yet, uh, I also follow Vita on Twitter, yet I've never actually interacted uh, I've never tried to contact me to nothing, you know, I just, psh, whatever, I just followed. I never read anything, just if something pops up, which usually nothing does. Anyway, reading Vita's biography on there, she, um, Vita classifies themselves as they, there. Uh, that was a mistake. I, I didn't realize that. Kelly Thompson actually contacted me um, on private uh, messenger when I posted my, um, somebody, I guess, directed, oh, I actually put it on Twitter and I never put things on Twitter. I almost never put my videos on Twitter, but this one, I was, I really love, you know, Captain Marvel. Uh, th th that issue was amazing. Vita, you know, did co-writing on there and it was just really good. And uh, I did decide to put it on there. I didn't tag Kelly or anything. I guess somebody else mentioned to Kelly, hey, look, such and such and such. Uh, two people have contacted me and said, hey, Vita actually identifies as non-binary, and uh, a third person, Kelly, actually contacted me also and said, maybe say something or at least correct it in the next book that you do with such and such, and uh, yeah, I have absolutely no problem with that. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and try and act like I understand non-binary very much. It's not one of my fields of expertise, all right? Electrical engineering, a good amount of physics, all right? The sciences like that, you know, the physical, um, I don't know, physics types of sciences, loves it. Teaching, as far as like uh, English, uh, yeah, absolutely, I'm, I'm awesome with that. And um, business, marketing, absolutely, bring the noise, right? I don't consider uh, gender studies one of my realms of expertise. In fact, I openly acknowledge I know next to nothing about it. So I don't exactly understand how that works. I don't. But you know what I do understand? Basic human uh, social interactions. It's not asking a lot of somebody to try and accommodate someone's requests. You know, something as simple as a pronoun. It's really easy, really easy to do. And I hope I don't sound too much like I'm preaching, although most people are going to accuse me of that. Oh, well. The idea is, though I don't understand it, and I'm probably going to make mistakes. You've probably heard me a couple times almost say she, right? But Vita is not a she. Vita is not a he. Vita chooses to identify as a they. And although I could make the argument that the English language simply does not properly allow for that, properly, it does not, um, it would be he or she, or you'd say he or she, right? But in this particular case, it's not. It's not a he and she. Like I said, I don't necessarily understand it. But uh, Vita has put on their... God, it's so hard for me, but I'm trying. Vita has put on their um, Twitter, they, there. Okay, I'll make mistakes. 
and hopefully no one will be off offended that I make mistakes and I try to correct myself all the time. I had a similar, pro I still have a similar problem with uh, Atlantiatus, the fictional character in the Wonder Woman comic book. I try to identify um, Atlantiatus properly, uh, but I make mistakes. And it's one thing to accuse someone of being insensitive by not trying, <laughs> but I am trying, so hopefully it'll be understood. And if it's not, well, sorry that you're so impatient. That's not on me. Um, but it is on me and it is on all of us to try to accommodate. And like, it's just a word. Nobody's asking me to build a freaking um, uh, wheelchair accessible ramp, you know what I'm saying, to get someplace. It's not nearly as hard as that. It's simple as if you make a mistake or, you know, you identify somebody as a he or a she, but they prefer to be identified as a they, you see what I just instinctively did? They uh, expect it like that, that it's, it's acceptable in the English language. It is. So yeah, try. It's not going to hurt anybody, but it could make somebody's day. It could make you a friend that you might need sometime in the future. Anyway, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.